A nationwide movement started less than three years ago is now taking root in central Illinois. Supporters and opponents of Moms for Liberty are very passionate and very vocal. Before we talk to local chapter representatives and the people who oppose their ideas, Phil Luciano gives us some background on Moms for Liberty. Moms for Liberty was founded in early 2021 in Florida by three women who had served on local school boards. The organization began by campaigning against COVID-19 safety restrictions in schools, such as mask mandates. The group later broadened its agenda to other school-related policies, such as how racism, religion, and gender identity are addressed in reading materials provided to students. If someone is demonstrably harming our children, we are going to come together to fight to protect them. The group has been supporting like-minded candidates for school boards nationwide. The message is working. In July 2022, Moms for Liberty claimed 195 chapters in 37 states with almost 100,000 members. A year later, it had 245 chapters in 45 states and more than 120,000 members. Moms for Liberty leaders say their group is nonpartisan, but all three founders are registered Republicans. And at its annual summit last summer, speakers included four GOP presidential candidates, including former President Donald Trump. You're not the threat to America. You're the best thing that's ever happened to America. However, Moms for Liberty is a threat as well as an extremist organization, according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. Um, we included them in this year's report because of their anti-government principles. They traffic in conspiracy theories about an illegitimate government. They take actions to censor school discussions around race, discrimination, LGBTQ identities. At the Moms for Liberty Summit, protesters pushed back, deriding the group for banning books and spreading anti-LGBTQ plus misinformation. The Southern Poverty Law Center shares those and other concerns. What they want is a public education that prioritizes white, cisgender children and otherizes children of color and different gender identities. Joining me tonight are Verge Sila and Dee Fogel with the Moms for Liberty Tazewell County Chapter. Brian Groth represents the Morton for Equality Task Force and Heather McMeekin is with the National Organization for Women Peoria Chapter. Thanks everybody for coming on and squeezing in the time and literally squeezing onto the set. We appreciate it. <laughs> Um, Thank you. Let's start with Verge and D, whichever one of you wants to take it. I'll take it. What is Moms for Liberty? Well, Mark, thank you for inviting us. Uh, your two previous episodes on the report card are uh, made the case for a lot of the things that we'll let D talk about as far as what Moms for Liberty is already doing in uh, Tazewell County. But we, Moms for Liberty of Tazewell County, is dedicated to fighting for the survival of America by uniting, educating, and empowering parents to defend their parental rights at all levels of government. Um, we hold leaders accountable. We spread awareness. We oppose government overreach. The, we do not co-parent with, with the government. Uh, we promote liberty. We engage on issues, and we have a community outreach that uh, is aimed at making the experience for our children, grandchildren, for the children of our community to have a better experience within the public school system. We are dedicated and focused on working on the betterment of the public, of the government run schools. And Heather and Brian, I'll ask you, what is Moms for Liberty? Well, I'm not gonna speak about what their platform is, but um, I question first, you know, it's Moms for Liberty and yet it, we have a white male here who's obviously not a mother explaining what their platform is. And they use terms like liberty and they use terms like parental rights um, and defending freedom. And we don't necessarily even know what they mean by those. But what I mean by that is that um, schools are obligated to provide an emotional social learning environment that is diverse that is emotionally safe for the children to learn. They should have diverse instructors who understand them. And all children should be free to learn about who they are, should receive um, competency and cultural 
learning and um, you don't see Moms for Liberty chapters setting up in diverse schools. They tend to stick to schools that are already in communities that are overwhelmingly white like Morton because they would receive a lot of challenge for some of the things that they promote. But their rights do not supersede. The rights of far-right Christian uh, people do not supersede the rights of diverse children to be safe in their learning environment and free from bullying. Let's talk about that, uh, Dean Verge, because she mentioned far right. From the articles you read, the things you see, it would seem that Moms for Liberty predominantly is supported by co uh, conservative groups, conservative people. Is, is that fair to say? Yeah, it's disappointing that we haven't got any Democrats who like to protect parents' rights. I think that's, that's a sad commentary. Well, when you talk about parents' rights, and Dee, I'll ask you about this, mm -hmm. what are some of the rights that you're concerned about? So parents do have a right to opt out of certain curriculum, and a lot of them don't know that. So the state, Illinois State Board of Education, and our executive and legislative branch have basically stated that sex ed, K-12, is appropriate curriculum. And they did allow individual school districts to opt out, and many have, the vast majority did, because that's what their parents wanted. Those schools that didn't, do the parents know that they can sign a form to opt out of any of that curriculum that they do not want uh, someone in their school teaching their child? So th the rights, the rights to look at the books before they're approved, um, they, they can do that as well. So these are some of the things we just want to uh, express to parents that they have the right to, to look into that and opt out if they choose. Brian, speaking of books, I know that uh, a lot of groups, including Moms for Liberty, are, are concerned about some of the books that our kids are able to get in their school libraries. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts on parents having control over that, or is that something that we should trust our, our school board members to decide what books are okay? Well, censoring books is uh, you know, problematic uh, on a number of, of accounts. Mm -hmm. um, but what is interesting about Moms for Liberty uh, banned book list is it's predominantly banning books against marginalized people, people that need, deserve to be seen and heard and supported. Um, by our public schools um, and their leaders. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a huge issue uh, for me when I see materials that are created by renowned authors intended to bring awareness to diversity, equality, marginalized groups that have historically been oppressed. And you know, in, in my school district, Morton School District, we already have a number of things that are working against those groups. Um, and it doesn't just work against those groups. It communicates to the majority people that it's okay to continue to um, lack awareness, lack understanding, lack an empathy uh, that's critical to the survival of the marginalized people. And if I may jump in here and just, there was a characterization of sex ed as somehow being inappropriate. Um, we're, you're talking about comprehensive uh, developmentally appropriate, scientifically informed div sex education that includes things like consent, knowing what your body parts are, knowing about how to say no to certain things or how to describe crimes against you. The first stage of sexual contact in Illinois for many years was third grade and they advocate for depriving these children of their education. And no, that comes we from, excuse me, we, we excuse okay, me, we excuse we advocate me, for excuse parents me, I'm rights. Speaking. Verge, I'm gonna ask you a we question next. We advocate for uh, parents' rights. We don't advocate what you're, excuse you're putting words, me, ex you're putting words okay. into our mouths. Reclaiming my time, reclaiming my time. I'm gonna let you respond, my time. Let's, let's finish up, Heather. <clears throat> yes, so, so what I would say to that is, um, that comes from a place of privilege where they assume that all children will get good and in, qualified instruction at home. Okay. What they're advocating for is to just do away with that and let those kids who don't get that instruction not have it. That is not going to help us with the STIs. That's not going to help us with teen pregnancy. That's not going to help us with all the children who are sexually abused and don't know how to describe it. They need that instruction. Verge, what's your response to that? Well, again, the, 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 the abuse of the, of the English language that's happened already in this show is really interesting. The word banned has been used about books. and. 
the, the, the first banning of books in the United States, in what's now the United States, was language. done by the Democrats that ran the, the Confederacy and prohibited Uncle Sam's cabin from being sold or included in, in possession. Now we're equating to having books that are not age appropriate removed from schools is the same as banning. Those books are still on eBay, they're still uh, on Amazon. Well, these books are not being banned. The, the, the misuse the of the English, English the language to morally equate banning books with, with restricting publicly funded schools from having age inappropriate documents is just a misuse of language. By who? Because we have experts who have decided that those are age appropriate. You have no so, expertise so the to second, decide so the second, well, what so these the are. So the second thing that, that is pro-government the way the United States has been founded is that there's something like 900 school districts in the state of Illinois. So we believe that the reason there are 900 school districts is that each community can set the standards that that community believes is appropriate. There's so, 900 school districts so people don't have to travel so far to get for their kids to get education and that's necessary. Well, that's a clever that's a clever but, that's a clever ruse, but that's not the case. Okay, it's also the reason good for, for the May, I, inter local, May local I interject? Government. Go ahead. So third grade a teacher teaching masturbation is not appropriate. And that's part of that Children curriculum. Children do masturbate in third grade, and you know it's stress relief, but and it's, it's not sinful. I just don't and there's nothing think wrong with a teacher to children wants to that. teach that. I've spoken with teachers, and they have decided that they would retire before they would teach. But that's a logical teach. fallacy that you're saying. Okay, just a second. Dee, let me ask you a question then. When it, yes. when it comes to sex ed, do you believe the, the way it's being taught now, do you believe it should be abolished or should it be a case-by-case -case basis the parents say yes my child can be in that class or no my child shouldn't be I think sexual activity should not be taught on the how and with who sexual organs scientific information of course but kindergarten through eighth grade they shouldn't be teachers shouldn't be expected to teach this and they don't want to if I may there's no and to say that it's that mandatory statement. to teach a sex ed curriculum in a school district because it came down from the state level, each individual school district should decide, and then each parent should have the opt-out option, and that's what we're advocating for. Let, let me throw this out there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Brian and Heather, do you believe that the State Board of Education should be able to mandate what every school district teaches, or should it be up to the district. It's a floor. When we're talking about. So these regulations are a floor and they didn't come out to just teach kids to go have sex. And that characterization shows that you have not done your homework on this issue and you do not have the qualifications to supersede what our brightest minds in the educational profession have come up with, which is that all children need a base set of information by which to interact with the world, to allow them to have some skills to deal with their peers, but also Moms for Liberty and the groups that they are tied with are even against, <laughs> they've come out uh, against even providing that education that allows children then to be able to make informed decisions when they are faced with things because people who are not properly informed are more easy to abuse, they're more easy to lead astray. Um, teaching sex ed, they aren't just teaching that and most teachers who are, are able to teach comprehensive sexuality education are not talking about let's go up in the bedroom and do this and teaching these things does not encourage them to have sex. Children already explore, a lot of them are abused, and they need the knowledge and the language of their bodies and consent to be able to describe that. So when something does happen to them, they can be as safe as they can be and they can get to a trusted adult and they need to understand what Heather, those things you're, look you're like. Heather, you're completely entitled to your opinion. Our position is... That's not an opinion. I hold my master's in community health ed I, as a health you're educator. Still, it's okay? still your opinion. So you know. it's still, you're, you're completely entitled to your opinion, and, and I'm glad we have a forum here to, to permit mm -hmm. you to say that. We believe that it's the parent's choice to make that decision for their child. But not, not for every other kid in that school. Well, but that's, and we're not, not asking for, all for that. The state. We're not asking for that. Yes, you are. You're advocating that, that well, you're, you, you just you, do you away with that curriculum. You don't know what Verge, Sile, and Dee Fogel are asking for. Well, what are you asking for? Tell us, Verge. We're asking for parents' rights. Okay, so, and, and the, as Dee was trying to make the point, 
the current state law, the legislator put in the law that each school district could opt out of this sex ed. That indicates some resistance to what the experts were asking the state legislator to do. When the, when the legislators put that in the law, I think there was downstate something like two school districts that did not opt out. So whatever, whatever the experts convince the legislators to do, most of the school districts below the Cook County said, no, that's not appropriate. We're not going to do it. But not so because it, I was informed. Not but, because they had the, the okay, credentials so, so to again, say that. You have the right to that opinion. But elected opinion officials in all this, these school districts, because they're all mm -hmm. elected, they're all people who are citizens of those communities, who've taken the burden to dedicate their time and energies to help educate the kids, mm -hmm. those intellected individuals said no. I've heard so, a lot, I've heard so a lot you're, about you're, So your education's fine, and I understand that, but the people who have the power to make those decisions, the school boards, listen to the parents. I've heard, a lot, the about, uh, I've heard a lot about elected officials and being representative of the community. The problem with that is our democracy is not just about satisfying the needs of the majority. It's about protecting the minorities as well. That's right. And in an area where the majority says it's not appropriate to do something that's in the best interest of some of those minorities or some of those marginalized people, then they don't have access to that. And you said earlier, Verge, that there's books on Amazon and things like that. There are people that can't afford the resources to go do that. That's why public institutions and our taxpayer dollars provide those. When they're taken away, some of those people have no access to those materials. I would encourage you to listen to the clip of Senator John Kennedy reading some of these books that are being found in elementary schools. And he was reading them to an Illinois legislative branch person, Janulius. And I encourage you to listen to that because that is something that we do not want a child to have. Uh, you don't access want your to, child to, but there are children whose lives. So we are, have do we have rating that. systems in movies, mm -hmm. in gaming systems. So you're saying that rating systems that say this is inappropriate for this age level is all infringing on the rights of children to learn about things that are adult content. Is that what you're saying? So. What I am saying is that where does this lead to? If we allow every school district to, do, to basically put every book up for discussion in a yay or nay vote, if you're in a community where a lot of people have an average reading level of, say, seventh grade, they may not even understand why that book was there, but there are children who do need diverse books like that. And reducing it to a discussion about, oh, some of these are obscene or whatever, um, diverse reading. There are readers who are, those are developmentally appropriate for that age range. Whether or not culturally or psychologically a child is ready for that is between them and their parents and their teacher. But to say we have to pull that book out because it has these words or that, that is a tactic of authoritarianism. That is not protecting no, anybody. You, you have movie ratings, you have gaming ratings. People. Gaming ratings are not the same thing as providing pedagogically appropriate, developmentally appropriate, information available to students who need that. And students not interested in it aren't going to check that book out. So but there are students who need a, that information a picture in and a they child's have every right to have access. So a picture in a child's book of an uncle in bed with his nephew is appropriate. Um, in, whatever in context third grade is, or fourth grade or fifth grade. The sharing of the family bed around the world is the cultural norm. The but context, if you're making it sexual in third that's grade, that's on you. exactly okay, guys, what that book was about. We've talked about sex ed and uh, books Let's talk about what other issues that you're concerned about, specifically in Tazewell County, and the reason why you started the chapter. What are some of the big things? Yeah, can I let you talk about? about some of the victories we've had already? Because I, th I think well, tell us tell us what your group is looking to do. And well, what again, you're concerned so I'm going to let I'm going to let Dee yeah, talk okay. about Absolutely. things that are already happening. So we have an outreach group, and we are reaching out for community involvement. So let's get parents. Let's get community members who have the time to volunteer, to get into the schools, to help. You know, we have a, I, I have a friend whose son was uh, beat up in school and a female teacher had to break it up. 
that female teacher is not equipped physically to handle three young men beating on another young man in high school. And so what we are looking to do is find volunteers to mentor students. So there's a Kids Hope USA program that will match one church with one school. And the church then recruits and vets mentors. And then the school district also then vets them through background checks to make sure they're appropriate volunteers. And they go in and mentor one child for one hour, one time a week for the whole school year. So some of the things that Kids Hope USA has been, in the mar been out in the nonprofit area for 25 years, and they've seen in the upper 80% improvement in behavior of those students that are being mentored, uh, socio-emotional competencies have in increased um, academically, they've improved, and these are 87, 89%, 79% improvements. Uh, I will get grant that this is a well-intentioned effort, but I will also point out that the platform that you organize around also involves organizing around groups like Turning Point USA. Turning Point USA has taught their young people, help us make training videos. So they go in the schools, they encourage young folks who are diverse to reveal who they are, and they get them on video, and then they turn them over to their leaders, and those people end the, up being doctors. We're, we're, we're not turning point. You made that same no, point. You made that same point. My, my mom is for excuse liberty. Me, I was and, speaking. And, Let me finish and, this. So you're the talking about people who are not the that you all are organizing with comes you, right out of you are talking the about astroturfing. People who are not Remember, the we had white Christians nationalist yeah. who went along with the Nazis and p felt perfectly okay. All right, now you're talking Nazis. That. This is over. <laughs> this, when, when she starts talking Nazis in this... Well, I'll tell you what, we're we, just we, about... We turn the lunacy of this conversation. We're just about out of time. I want to give both sides one more chance to talk. Tell us what people need to know about Moms for Liberty in Tazewell County. We have a lot of volunteer um, opportunities. Um, I have in the mail right now, pocket constitutions to pass out to all eighth graders in Tazewell County. I need help getting those in the hands of the schools to pass out to those students. And the Kids Hope program, I can't speak highly enough of it. Uh, KidsHopeUSA.org, go on, on, site, on their website and look at what they offer and what that program can mean to students. And let's get our, our communities around our schools, our teachers, they are our friends, they are our neighbors, they are our family members, they are uh, fellow uh, parishioners, they are, they are the backbone of our community and we need to be in there and helping them. Brian, uh, as we're quickly running out of time here, well, I, I just say? say this, Virgin D, you, you say that these words don't match, but you've chosen to align yourself with a national organization that was just recently placed on the Southern Poverty Law Center anti-government extremist list. So we we're parents a, please don't interrupt me. at school please board. Don't let's, let's let them me. finish real quick. Go ahead. <clears throat> In Morton School District, we have an administrator who is using school resources to subscribe to organizations very much like Moms for Liberty that have an anti-LGBTQ+, an anti-black, mm -hmm. uh, a, yeah. a pro-Christian uh, bias, which by the way, I am a Christian, but there is an important part of the First Amendment called the uh, Establishment Clause that says it is not to be part of a public institution. And we don't recognize, we fail to recognize that that is essential to the protection of our religious freedoms, not a threat to them. Our state institutions are not allowed to push a religious component within their school, which is happening in our district. So um, I think these organizations are really uh, an effort to move us backwards instead of forwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I think they will be uh, met with resistance from organizations like uh, like uh, Peoria Now and, and our task force in Morton. Virgin D, real quick, Moms for Liberty, are they anti-LGBTQ or no. anti-minority? As, no. as a matter of fact, you, you won't find anybody uh, in the in the organization. Now, there's 300 chapters, so you're going to find a somebody who's off off the, the, the reservation, so to speak. But, uh, you know, we're, we're not anti Excuse anybody. Excuse me, that was racist, saying off the reservation. So Well, well guys, hey, everybody, yeah. I'm going to end it here on that note. We really are out of time. I do want to thank all four of you for mm -hmm. coming in thank and you. having this debate. It's healthy to talk about this. We're talking about our kids, the most important thing in our world Absolutely. right now. Absolutely. And uh, we will revisit this issue again. Thank you all thank again you. for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.
Welcome back. I'm here with Phil Luciano. Interesting and important topic, Phil. When you were researching this, anything surprise you that you well, found out? What's really impressive is regardless of what you feel about this organization and the work they do this way or that, it's impressive that it started less than three years ago. And within two and a half years, it got big enough, so so influential that this was a a, a driver at their uh, with, with with the Republican nominees for president. They appeared at the summit for the group over the summer. I mean, multiple multiple candidates. That's that just blew me away. I'm like, wow, that's a quick rise. So the point being, you've got an issue that's important to you, and it, you think it's well, it's just me and a few. No, man, you can have a lot of sway still in America. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where we go from here. Well, let's talk about what's coming up next, and that is you got to see this. One of the stories I think you'll like because you are the, you're the czar of the furry friends, yes? <laughs> sure. Yeah. And we've got a cat cafe, and this is the first one in central Illinois. And it, for a lot of people, it sounds kind of weird because uh, who wants to go to a cafe and hang out with cats? We don't have to, but if you want to, Coffee and a sandwich with a cat. Check it out. I know a lot of people that would. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Got to make sure your coffee is for free, though. Yeah, yeah. All right, thanks very much for joining us. We appreciate it. We are here every Thursday night at Issue with Mark Welp, followed by You Gotta See This. Have a great night. <laughs>